We're at the point where there is a clear dividing line between eight teams at the top and the whole rest of the nation. But is our national champion in that group? You are Locked On College Basketball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, folks? Happy Tuesday. Welcome into the Locked On College Basketball Podcast, the only daily year-round national college hoop show, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are your co-hosts. I'm Andy Patton. He is Isaac Shade. Today's episode of Locked On College Basketball is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster, and they do it for free. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. Terms and conditions apply. All right, folks, not a huge slate of games on Monday evening. Really not a lot of great college basketball matchups again until we get that Gonzaga-UConn game on Friday and then a ton of fantastic hoops coming our way on Saturday. Uh, Currently, we have seven undefeated teams remaining in college basketball. Last week took out a big bunch of them. All seven of those teams are not playing another game until Saturday. I'm thinking it's finals week in (laughs) colleges right now as we have a lot of teams avoiding any big matchups for the time being. Uh, We also have been following this story at Michigan with Juwan Howard and a staffer uh, and potentially some kind of altercation there. As we're recording this right now, there are not a ton of details. Uh, Perhaps details will come out between now and when this is published, but I promise that as soon as we get more information about what's going on there, we will address it here on the show. Obviously, potentially uh, a very significant thing that that could happen for Michigan's coaching staff for this program uh, in general, and we'll keep you updated as much as we can. Isaac. Before we get into our top 25s, before we get into what this field looks like as we get closer and closer to March, I got a trivia question for you because it is Trivia Tuesday after all. I'm going to hit you with this trivia question, folks listening. Try to think of that answer. We'll get to it at the end of the show. Isaac, Alabama currently has the number one ranked offense in Ken Palm, but they are 84th on defense. Last year's number one ranked offense was 73rd at Ken Palm in defense. So it's not like this is completely unprecedented. The yep. trivia question for you, and again, we'll answer this at the end of the show, who was that team last year? Number one offense, 73rd ranked defense. We'll get to all that. But right now, let's talk about our rankings. Again, for those of you yep. who don't know, Locked On College Basketball, we do our own rankings. Myself, of course, Isaac, and then Leaf Tulin, our regular guest on Wednesday shows. We all do our own rankings. We compare them to the AP poll, kind of talk about where we're at. And Isaac, this year, this week, there was a pretty clear top seven, top eight. And then after that, it was pretty difficult. We had some undefeated teams we had to find some spots for. We had a lot of teams in that like eight to 15 range who lost, had to figure out how far down are we dropping some of those teams. So we'll start you out with the top eight and we'll talk about uh, how we feel about those teams. First off, we have Arizona, then Purdue and Houston, followed by UConn and Kansas. Kansas is the team we're the farthest apart on in this top eight. We have them fifth. The AP voters have them second. And then we have Marquette at six, Baylor at seven, Creighton and eight. Isaac, first question. Out of the eight teams, do you think yeah. we're looking the national champion? Absolutely. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, you, you get to the old uh, – the, the cliche, like, mm-hmm. hey, would you take this eight versus the field? Mm-hmm. And obviously, from a betting standpoint, absolutely not. That would be stupid. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, man, when I look at this group of eight teams that we have in our top eight, it's like it would hard, it would be – like I could look at everything be, beneath that and I could easily pick out a team that I would give you for that. And, in fact, I will probably do that in the next segment, Andy. But mm-hmm. when, I, when I look at this, man, it is – there's no team that right now has separated itself as the team, although Arizona is well on its yeah. way to doing that. We're, we're going to keep, you know, we we talked last Friday about this gauntlet they have ahead of them. Let me quickly remind everyone of that. Obviously, they took care of Wisconsin in easy fashion, but then they got Purdue on Saturday, uh, Alabama the next Wednesday, and then FAU after that. So, you know, we're, we're going to continue to learn just how elite Arizona is. And I'm very grateful for that even before PAC 12 play. Mm-hmm. Um, but Andy, I mean, you look at these and the way UConn's playing right now, yeah. 
ridiculous. Uh, Purdue's looking really good. I, I know they got a test from Alabama over the weekend, but man, they, they held their own. Um, Houston, they haven't had too much strength of schedule wise yet, Andy. Like mm-hmm. I, I was actually yesterday looking at their record so far and the, their resume so far. They really haven't done too much. So I, I'm a little bit of a wait and see mode with Houston. Um, but yes, as I look at this, I feel really, and it was interesting, you and I were texting about this on Sunday as we were putting together our top 25s and basically saying, Andy, I feel great about this top seven, top mm-hmm. eight. Um, none of them lost last week. That helped make it a little bit easy. Yeah. I shift. I personally shifted Kansas down a little bit because I just wanted to bump up UConn and Purdue and Houston, mm-hmm. uh, which is no fault of Kansas. But um, like it, as you said, it just got murky after that, but feel really good about this delineation. So if you were to ask me just as a, as a basketball watcher, not as a better, mm-hmm. 100%. I would say the national champion is in this group. And obviously right now we'd have to say Arizona is, is the one that you look at with mm-hmm. the most favor. You know, it's funny as much as there feels like there's been a ton of parody in college basketball this year, and there has, and then certainly uh, teams nine through 25 on our list, which we will talk about momentarily uh, certainly looks a lot different than, than the preseason, but these eight teams right here, I mean, what was the lowest, I don't know off the top of my head, but the lowest any of these teams were ranked preseason couldn't have been lower than like 15. I think it might've been Arizona, to be honest. Yeah. In the AP poll specifically. Yeah. I'll look while you're talking. Keep going. Yeah. I think Arizona was like ninth maybe in the AP poll, but like I know Marquette and Creighton and UConn were all in the top 10. I know Houston was, I know Purdue was like, obviously Duke and Michigan state were top 10, top five teams that have fallen out in a significant way. Uh, But really for the most part, like this is more or less the group of teams we kind of expected to be having this conversation about. Uh, it changes more as we get into the Clemsons and the Oklahomas and the BYUs and the Colorado States and other teams, James Madison, uh, for that matter, who've kind of climbed into that conversation. But top eight teams, potential ones and two seeds right now. I, I, I mean, if this if these were the ones and the two seeds, these eight teams, I wouldn't bat an eye at it. I wouldn't think anything unusual about these being the eight teams. It feels like this is a really strong group of programs, three in the Big 12, three in the Big East. You got one in the Pac-12 in Arizona, of course, one in the Big 10 as well in Purdue. This is a, a really quality group of programs, and I would not be surprised at all if they're contending for, for Elite Eights and Final Fours, if every one of these teams is in that conversation. And and what you said there about three of them being in Big 12, three in the Big East, That yeah. I mean, we kind of honestly expected that out of those yeah. conferences, but still the fact that it's playing out to be true is pretty incredible. Um mm-hmm. Andy, and, and we've got, uh, I mean, it's true in the AP poll, these are your top eight teams. At FanDuel, these are currently the top eight teams in terms of the national championship odds. Mm-hmm. Ken Palm, it's really close, Andy, without mm-hmm. looking. Uh, I know we're not, I'm doing the trivia answering today, <laughs> but one of these eight teams is not the top eight at Ken Palm right now. Any guesses which one it is, or maybe you've got it in your head already? I... I do know who it is, to be perfectly honest with you, but I will tell you that I would have guessed Creighton because I know that Creighton got bumped pretty good when they lost uh, to Colorado State earlier this year, but I know for a fact that's not the answer. Yes. Yeah, it's Kansas, as Mm -hmm. you have in your head, who is 10th. We've got right now BYU 8 and Tennessee 9. So uh, that's kind of where it's at. So every, you know, we're seeing it with our eyeballs. I think our eyeball test tells us these are the top eight right now. And Mm -hmm. I know there might be some... But what about Creighton's really bad loss to Colorado State? And Colorado mm-hmm. State just lost at home to St. Mary's, who's not yeah. playing well. I, okay, fine, whatever. Creighton <laughs> is an elite offensive team. Yeah. That, that to me, was a one-off. And also, Colorado State's really good. Yeah. Um, Andy, I think the next interesting thing here is that in this top eight, we don't have an SEC team, although you know Tennessee's kind of right there on the verge. Mm-hmm. But we also don't have an ACC team, although the ACC has the second, the, the ACC has the second most ranked teams mm-hmm. at, in this week's AP poll behind only the Big 12. And so, yeah. um, I mean, they're, they're, they're kind of knocking on the door, but not right in this elite uh, group of eight that we're looking at. And that's that's interesting and curious to me. Yeah, I think uh, the SEC has some really fantastic teams that have just taken some losses. Tennessee, we'll, we'll talk more about the SEC actually in the strength of schedule that they we've seen from some of those top teams. 
Uh, ACC, North Carolina, I believe we have ninth, so they're basically just <laughs> missed being in this top eight conversation. Obviously, Duke losing some early games has pushed them down uh, farther than we expected. Miami getting waxed by Colorado hurt their chances of, of being a top 10 team, but there's still a lot of talent kind of mixed in the ACC. I'm just I'm not surprised nobody has quite ascended into that conversation in the top eight, but again, Carolina's potentially knocking on the door. I wouldn't be surprised to see them in that conversation, depending how their next couple games go. Uh, one one quick amendment. Uh, you, we were talking about where these teams were preseason AP poll. It was actually Baylor that was the lowest at 20th, oh, that's right. um, but yeah. Arizona was the second lowest at 12th. And so mm-hmm. these teams are what we expected them to be. And then I think we would say, especially because of what we're looking at right there, that Baylor would be the biggest surprise of this group. But a Scott Drew coach team is never all that much. Oh, mm-hmm. surprise. Andy, we want to keep moving into those teams that are right behind this group, looking at nine through 25 and what other programs, in, including a pair of undefeated teams who skyrocketed up this week. Could any of them crash this top eight party? Could any of them make a final four? Oh, you believe they can. We're going to talk about who it is in just a second. Right after I tell you that this episode of Locked on College Basketball is brought to you by LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs, which has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. It's critically important for the success of your business to have a pool of quality candidates to interview. And thankfully, LinkedIn Jobs makes it super easy to find those. It's not just some other job board. They have a vast network of more than a billion professionals making it the best place to hire, which is super easy when you got that many quality candidates. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire effectively and efficiently. But thankfully, with LinkedIn, this process is intuitive, it's quick, and it's easy. They've even recently launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, making this process much more doable for your small business. So if you want to get involved in that, post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Again, that's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Andy, we've got uh, we've just talked about our top eight in this week's Locked On Top Twenty Five poll. Let me move us into this next group that you and I were talking about that we were kind of wrestling with, which is like that nine to fifteen ish kind of range, maybe even extending extending to eighteen, and then we'll look at nine through twenty five and others receiving votes as well. Number nine, North Carolina, interestingly unmoved. From last week, uh, 10 Clemson shot all the way up in ours. Uh, Tennessee is 11th, Gonzaga 12th, Oklahoma 13, Illinois 14, FAU 15. And then we keep on going from there. I want to pause there, Andy, because this is really where that group was that was interesting to me because we had North Carolina losing to UConn last Mm -hmm. week. Clemson and Oklahoma are those two undefeated teams. So it was like, where are they going to come? Um, Tennessee is right there in that mix. They beat Illinois on Saturday. Gonzaga lost at Washington Saturday. Mm -hmm. We just talked about Oklahoma. Illinois had beaten FAU, but then lost at Tennessee. And then FAU, obviously, as we said, had lost to Illinois. So, Andy, we had all this kind of like, what do we make of all these teams that were losing to each other? Where do we slot those two undefeated teams in? How good are, you know, all of these kind of questions. How did you kind of process getting these teams organized? Yeah, it's tough because one of the big things for me, I think at this point is you have to reward undefeated teams. I mean, you have to reward teams that haven't lost. Uh, and, and we have the, the majority of undefeated teams are ranked in our in our top 25. I know Ole Miss received votes. Uh, they didn't end up actually in the top 25, but they got some of those votes again. So they're in that conversation. And to me, I mean, I mean, you look at Clemson and Oklahoma, it's not like their schedule has been complete gimmies. That's part of the knock on Ole Miss. Uh, they have played some decent teams. Central Florida's a good squad. They snuck right by them just barely, but they won. And again, you want to reward that. But Clemson and Oklahoma, and they both have good wins on their resume. Clemson's got that win over TCU. They got a win over a scrappy South Carolina team. Oklahoma has wins over Providence and Arkansas uh, and the, uh, USC as well. Like they have quality wins on their resume they've beaten pretty badly most of the teams that they've played only two games within single digits so for me like 
I have to reward these teams and they may not be as they, they may not be teams that I think are as likely to, you know, win a national championship as maybe some of the other teams in this conversation, but you have to reward them for, they haven't done anything wrong They're, I mean, they have literally won every game that they've played. So Clemson and Oklahoma were both teams. I immediately shot into my top 15. And then from there, you kind of got a value, like, the overall resume, of course, how bad was the recent loss? What were the circumstances? What are things that might carry forward? You know, I look at Gonzaga. This is the team I follow the closest, and I watched that game specifically. And it's like a road loss to a good Washington team in a vacuum is probably not something that should crush where you are at in the rankings, and it certainly did not. Gonzaga is still 12th on ours, still 10th in the AP poll. Uh, but at the same time, like, Gonzaga has flaws. Those flaws were exposed. Gonzaga is going to play UConn on Friday. If those flaws are exposed again, then what do we do with the Zags? If they're on a, they won't be on a two game losing streak because they're, they played Mississippi Valley state on Monday, but that that's the kind of thing where you have to kind of figure out like where all this works. And it's not easy. Tennessee is one of the toughest teams for me to evaluate because they have so many losses, but they're all good quality losses. And a win over Illinois is absolutely nothing to sneeze at. So a lot of teams in this group that I think you could, you could probably move nine through 15 or nine through even 18 in a lot of different ways and it would still work. And I think that's what makes this fun, but it's, we're going to learn a lot more about a lot of these teams as soon as Saturday for most of them. Yeah. And, and, and with that like logic that we're using there of like, well, they haven't lost a game. We can't punish mm -hmm. them. And so, as you said, somebody would say, well, what about Ole Miss? And then we yeah. said, well, their schedule, you know, whatever. But yeah. then somebody would say, I looked at Houston's schedule and their strength of schedule yeah. isn't that great either. And so, mm -hmm some of that eventually just has to come down to eye test and yeah. like computer numbers and, and things of that nature. And so um, like if Ole Miss keeps winning, they will get in. Like yeah. you, you just got to keep doing it. Uh, but that's where it's at right now. Um, you know, you talked about those teams outside of this group and 16 through 18 gets us to Virginia, Kentucky, Wisconsin, and, and can Virginia and Wisconsin are two of the teams we had the biggest difference on than mm -hmm. the week's AP poll. We had Virginia 16. They were 22 in the AP. Uh, we have uh, Wisconsin 18. They were 23rd in the AP. I think a lot of voters dropped them pretty significantly, Andy, after that drubbing at Arizona, and I mm -hmm. get that. But what Wisconsin has been doing lately I think shows a lot and, and part of why we've got them there. Now, I almost wonder if, sorry to interrupt, I almost wonder if Virginia gets knocked a bit too because they're only losses to Wisconsin. But if people are evaluating Wisconsin a little bit lower because of the loss, it's like it's like Arizona beating at home, beating a really good Wisconsin team, uh, beat, I mean, beating them badly. To me, that said more about Arizona than it says about either Wisconsin or Virginia. I don't know that the AP voters are necessarily punishing Virginia because of that, but those two teams being the teams that we're much higher on, I think indicates that maybe we – aren't viewing the Arizona win over Wisconsin as as problematic for the Badgers as many, maybe many others are. Andy, let's look at it this way. We had a, that group of eight, and then we've got this group now that we're looking at from North Carolina all the way down to Wisconsin at 18. If you were to take one of these teams and say, hey, when we look up uh, heading into conference championship week, mm -hmm. one of these teams would have – jumped into that top eight who is it for you tennessee uh because i think the sec and we'll talk more about the sec uh, they maybe aren't quite as elite as people hoped but if you get two two cracks at Al arkansas two cracks at alabama two cracks at kentucky two cracks at auburn florida and, and Ole miss and south carolina who look better than we expected like Tennessee is going to get better. Their iron sharpens iron. They're going to get better. They're going to get stronger. Uh, they're going to get their defense. The defense is already fantastic. Hopefully the guard play continues to improve as Vescovy and Ziegler get their kind of legs underneath them. Dalton connects, but incredible. Like Tennessee is the, I think the most talented team in this group. Uh, and I think they're the most likely to potentially be in that conversation. Yep. Uh, that was going to be my answer. So yep. I'm actually going to go, uh, I think with uh, Illinois, Andy, mm -hmm. and here, here's my reasoning why. I think it's going to be this thing where they're really kind of coming into their own right now. I know that they've now lost to Tennessee and to Marquette, both teams that we would probably like, I, I would still have Tennessee. I'm right with you. And obviously we think a lot of Marquette as mm -hmm. Illinois gets into big 10 play. We were just talking about this last week outside of Purdue. Ah, like I would, we got to have Illinois second in the big mm -hmm. 10 right now. And so I believe that they're going to get into big 10 play and keep doing work. And so yeah. I wouldn't be surprised as long as they're 
consistency is there throughout Big Ten play that they would be able to work their way up into that top 10, top eight-ish kind of territory. And, you know, even if they're not able to get a top two seed, I could easily see this Illinois team as a three or four seed when we look up on Selection Sunday. I'll toss Kentucky in there, too, just briefly. Uh, They have had some inconsistency issues. I think that that will continue to happen. They are a team with a ton of freshmen. But they just got Aaron Bradshaw back. And, folks, Aaron Bradshaw, if you didn't see him against Penn, wow, he looked really, really good. 17 points, 13 boards, three blocks again against a a Penn team that's not great but has some really quality games on their resume already. So if Bradshaw is that guy and he continues to get more comfortable for Calipari and the Cats – Uh, they're a team that could make some real noise as well. And interestingly, I think uh, North Carolina is one of those teams that maybe is tossed into this conversation. Well, we get Mm -hmm. a matchup of Kentucky and Carolina on Saturday in the CBS Sports Classic. And so we will uh, hopefully learn a lot more about both of those teams on Saturday in Atlanta. Uh, Isaac, real quick, want to talk about the last teams that we had ranked in our uh, poll here. We had Colorado State at 19, obviously drop a bit with that loss to St. Mary's. We had BYU down at 20 after their loss to Utah. Duke holds steady at 21. Colorado at 22nd, the first of two teams that we ranked that the AP poll did not. Granted, Colorado received the most AP votes for an unranked team. Uh, We have 23 for James Madison at 24. We have Memphis, our other unranked team. They received the fifth most votes uh, for teams not ranked in the AP poll. And then at 25, Northwestern. AP ranked teams that we did not rank include Texas and Miami, uh, although both those teams did receive votes in our voting, along with Ole Miss, as we mentioned, Iowa State, Mississippi State as well. Any thoughts on that, Isaac? Any concerns, like things that that stand out about how we kind of finished out our top 25 there? I don't. You know, I've for me, there's like those, what, seven teams, those that are in the others receiving votes, and even a couple others that are all kind of swirling around for me in this like range where they're probably going to flit in and out of the top 25 and be in the mid to late 25s to 30s week to week. And so I think when Colorado State gets back healthy, hopefully that mm-hmm. they will, uh, we'll see them do work. Colorado, I wouldn't be surprised as we move into conference play to see them hang around just because, as we, again, as we were talking about, we see them uh, at right now probably number two in the Pac-12 behind Arizona. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that, you know, that could have some staying power for them as well. And, you know, probably with James Madison too, since they have solidified themselves here, as long as they keep winning, we expect them to in conference play as well. Mm -hmm. And so Andy, that, that since they found their way here, I would imagine until they lose, they're going to stay. Yeah, I think spots about 20 through 35 could be organized a whole bunch of different ways, but um, people don't like to read top 35s, I guess, so we're doing top 25. I got to have a cutoff there somewhere. Uh, Isaac, we got some mailbag questions that we were unable to get to in our Friday episode of Locked On College Basketball that we're going to address today, including taking a look at the SEC as a whole, the conference's performance, whether we're concerned about the teams in this conference going forward. All of that coming up after a word from today's sponsor, FanDuel. Folks, as the weather gets colder and colder, the college basketball offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time than right now to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use, and there is a wide range of betting options, which include spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. They also have their top eight national championship odds, and spoiler alert, it's the same eight teams we expected it to be. Purdue leads the pack at plus 950. Arizona behind them at plus 1,000. Kansas at 1,200. Yukon and Marquette both at 1,300. Houston at 1,500. Creighton at 1,600. And, of course, rounding out with the Baylor Bears at 2,000. So, folks, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get in on the action this college basketball season. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. All right, Isaac, let's try to get to these mailbag questions. Hopefully we can get to all of them. If not, I promise you, those of you who have asked these questions will get your answer heard at some point here in the next couple of days as we continue to try to get these mailbag questions answered. This one comes from GU Big Rig on Discord, asked a while ago. We're still going to get to it here because it's about the SEC. He says, 
Before the season started, the SEC was promoted as a league that would be competitive with the Big East and the Big 12. Yet after one month, with the ex exception of South Carolina, who's played a weak schedule, all of the SEC teams have two or more losses. Where do you have the SEC ranked against other conferences, especially since the Big East has five teams with one or fewer losses and the Big 12 has eight teams with one or fewer losses? Isaac, what do you think? Uh, I'm not – I don't feel any different. I still have the SEC right now as the as the second best team in the country, and so does, for that matter, Ken Palm, uh, mm -hmm. where they are second just ahead of the Big Ten and the Big East. Big East is actually fourth at Ken Palm right now, mm -hmm. although as as we recently talked about, Andy, Big Twelve, yeah, up at the top. Um, here's where we got to have this conversation, Andy. The difference between act, wins and losses. Mm -hmm. And strength of schedule or strength of record, right? Um, for example, to me, Tennessee is the poster child for this in the SEC mm -hmm. right now. If I were to just look at Tennessee's record and say, oh boy, Tennessee, you're sitting mm -hmm. here right now at six and three, that's not very good until yeah. you remember who those three losses are to, Andy. Tennessee's three losses are to number are to Purdue, mm -hmm. to Kansas, and to North Carolina all of which are top nine in the current AP poll. But when you look at, uh, like, let's compare that to Ole Miss, who mm -hmm. is currently undefeated, mm -hmm. and we see uh, uh, Mississippi. Their best win, Memphis? Yeah, probably. You know, like maybe NC State, maybe mm -hmm. UCF. But the fact that it's those three schools that we're talking about, mm -hmm. their potential best wins, when Tennessee – like and so that's that's the difference in this mm -hmm. is right. we, we have to dig into what what those wins and losses actually are and so as we do that that's when you arrive at recognizing that the SEC man they they're ready to go with it and I'm not coming off of that preseason prediction at all yeah I think you look at um the this question was asked before this last weekend. I, I know that. And so like BYU was undefeated. Now they have a loss to Utah. Uh, Cincinnati was undefeated. Now they have a loss to the a Big East school uh, in Xavier. Uh, TCU was undefeated. They have a loss to Clemson. Like you're starting to see as we get closer and closer to conference play, these teams, you know, schedules start to even out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and, and so you're not going to see like, you know, this bad team still is undefeated while this good team has four or five losses. Like you see that in the first month of the season because it's just kind of wonkiness with how teams schedule, how the MTE shake out, uh, stuff like that. But to me, the SEC is still great. Yes, maybe Arkansas and Alabama are a little bit uh, worse than we thought that they were going to be, at least at this point in the season. But Ole Miss is better. South Carolina is better. Florida is arguably better. Our Auburn is arguably better. You know, I, I think that there's uh, teams that, you know, Mississippi State floats around in there as well. Like there's a lot of teams kind of in that like borderline ranked kind of just outside the rankings in the SEC. A couple of those teams are probably going to rise to the top as we get into conference play, finish in that three, four, five range. But I still see the SEC as a conference is going to put quite a few teams in the NCAA tournament and, and deservedly so. And, you know, like the Big East was one of the comparisons here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you look at it and it's like, yeah, Connecticut, Marquette, Creighton, those three teams we talked about earlier that are right now would be a top two seed in March Madness. It's like beyond that, mm -hmm. dude, I, you know, Providence, yeah, they've only got two losses. I think mm -hmm. they're fine. Yeah. Butler only has two losses. They're fine. Yeah. But it's like nothing in the Big East out of outside of that top heaviness, which is extremely top heavy. Yeah. None of that really impresses me right now. So. Yeah. Yeah. The SEC or excuse me, the Big East is not as balanced as I think people expected them to be. St. John's, Villanova, uh, just not quite making the, the noise that people had. Big East fans at least would have hoped for. Yeah, that is very true. Andy. Let's do one more quickly. How about that? Yeah. Uh, this comes from A. Williams02 on our Discord channel. Says, is UConn the most complete team in college basketball right now? And are they the early natty favorites? Quick answer to this because we got to get to our tr Tuesday trivia answer as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They're in that conversation. We talked about those top eight teams. Obviously, UConn being clearly among those top eight teams. I still think Arizona is a bit more... Uh, complete, uh, more balanced, good depth uh, on the bench, coming off the bench as well. UConn injuries are a little bit of a concern to me. We got to make sure Klingon's going to be okay with the toe stuff. Caravan's, I think, got some finger stuff. But if, if those guys are okay, if Stefan Castle can kind of reacclimate and find his spot, like 
this team is really, really good. They're one of the three, five best teams in the country in terms of overall balance. They're absolutely a national championship contender. I'm still going to lean Arizona, but they're right in that conversation. Yep. I, I'll go with you. I, Arizona is the team right now, but I, I would have no problem saying that UConn would be number two for me at this yep. point. Let's get to that trivia question answer here before we wrap out before we wrap up the show. Uh, again, a reminder for those who want to wrap it out. Wrap <laughs> it out. <laughs> who want to rehear that question here? Uh, the, the trivia question: Alabama currently has the number one ranked offense per Ken Palm, but is 84th in defense. Last year's number one ranked offense finished 73rd at Ken Palm in defense. Who was it, Isaac? Who do you got? Well, it's funny when you first asked me this, Andy. The first team I went to in my brain was Baylor. But I know it can't be them because their defense was worse than that. They're like just outside the top 100. Mm -hmm. So it can't be them. So they must have been a little lower offensive efficiency. I thought about Iowa because they're usually really good offensively, but really terrible defensively. I don't think it's them. I don't think they were number one. I feel like it was Gonzaga. That is correct. Let's go. The answer was Gonzaga. Yes, Drew Timmy led teams tended to be very high offensively, uh, not so high defensively. Interestingly, Baylor was second in offensive efficiency, but 107th at defense there. So really good thought, really good answer to that question there. Nice job. Gonzaga, of course, makes it to the Elite Eight thanks to Julian Strother last year. First offensive ranked team, 73rd in defense. They're certainly looking like a better defensive team this year, hopefully. Uh, that will bear out for them. You need more balance. Yes, Alabama is so back and forth year after year mm -hmm. on this. Nate Oates needs to get it consistent. Andy, that's it for today's show. Great time talking about our top 25 folks. We'd love to hear your top 25 or where you think we're wrong and why you think we're wrong. Let's get into it. That's the fun stuff. Uh, come follow us. Check things out on Discord. We'd love to chat with you there. The link is in the show notes as always. Don't forget to subscribe to us on audio and video. If you're watching, smash that like button so we know you are here. As always, apologies to the lawyer family. Let's go all the multitudes of wildcats. <laughs> and until tomorrow, peace. Peace.